dear students this lecture is concerned with the angiotensin we have already seen the we have already discussed the role of adh aldosterone and today we are going to discuss the role of angiotensin angiotensin 2 basically starts the function from its substrate which is known as the angiotensinogen this angiotensinogen which is an alpha 2 globulin is coming is produced and released in circulation mainly by the liver and this angiotensinogen level may be increased by the plasma corticosteroids the corticosteroids estrogens and thyroid hormones and this angiotensin 2 is also known as the renin substrate but this angiotensin 2 has got multiple effects its cardiovascular effects its effects on the kidneys cardiovascular effect we are concerned is a very important direct vasoconstrictor of both the arteries and the veins and in this way it increases the blood pressure this angiotensin 2 also has got the prothrombotic potential that is it can do it or thrombotic potential through adhesion and the aggregation of the platelets and the stimulation of the plasminogen activator inhibitor so this when the cardiac cell growth is stimulated a local renin angiotensin system is activated there in the myocyte which stimulates cardiac cell growth through the protein kinase c and same effect is also it can be activated in the smooth muscle cells uh, in conditions of hypertension atherosclerosis or the endothelial endothelial damages this angiotensin 2 is a very important gq stimulator of the heart during hypertrophy as compared to the endothelin 1 or alpha 1 adrenal receptors then it has got some angiotensin 2 has got some neuronal effects that is angiotensin 2 increase the thrust sensation through subfornical organ of the brain it increases the secretion of the adh in from the posterior pituitary and the secretion of acth in the anterior pituitary it also potentiate the release of the norepinephrine by the direct action of the postganglionic sympathetic fibers then this angiotensin 2 has got effects on the adrenal glands it acts on the adrenal cortex and causes the release of aldosterone a hormone that causes the kidney to retain sodium and lose potassium we have seen we have discussed all this aldosterone in the previous lecture now this elevated plasma angiotensin 2 levels are responsible for the elevated aldosterone level present during the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle now the effects of angiotensin 2 on the kidneys perhaps the most powerful sodium retaining hormone of the body basically it constrict actually its effect is preferential on the a uh, efferent arteriole it constricts the efferent arteriole and creates two changes definitely when the efferent arteriole if you have the idea of the efferent arteriole when the efferent arteriole get constricted definitely it there will be increase in the hydrostatic pressure the glomerulus and it will increase the gfr and at the same time there will be a decrease in the hydrostatic pressure in the peritubular capillary network which will assist or help in the reabsorption in the peritubular capillary network then it's at uh, this angiotensin 2 increase the oncotic pressure of the plasma leaving the glomerulus entering into the peritubular capillary network which assist in the reabsorption in peritubular capillary network then this angiotensin 2 it directly stimulates the reabsorption of sodium by enhancing the working capability of the sodium potassium atpase pump 
It also increased the sodium hydrogen counter transport on the luminal surface of the peritubular capillary network. So there will be sodium reabsorption and sodium reabsorption is direct and indirect also. Indirect means through the production of aldosterone and direct is by the activation of sodium potassium pump. Now a very important uh, thing you must know that when we give the ACE inhibitors that means you know that this angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor and this angiotensin 2 uh, is found in the lungs through an, uh, angiotensin 1 is converted into the angiotensin 2 in the lungs with the, with the help of an enzyme which is known as the ACE angiotensin converting enzyme which convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Now if we inhibit this enzyme we can block the conversion of 1 into 2 and that the vasoconstriction effect is not there and there will be a vasodilatation and patient will be move toward uh, patient gain will be moved from hypertension to the hypotension that is to relieve the hypertension or to treat the hypertension we give ACE inhibitors. Now a very uh, common side effect of these A inhibitors is a dry cough and this dry cough is due to the bronchoconstriction. Actually the problem is that when we uh, when we inhibit the ACE when we inhibit the ACE, this ACE is also responsible for the conversion of bradykinin into an into inactive metabolite. The bradykinin, this ACE is also responsible for the conversion of bradykinin into the inactive metabolites. When the ACE is inhibited, you have got more or you can say we have, we have got very active bradykinin, more quantity of bradykinin in the lungs. This irritates your lungs and causes the dry cough. Not the solution for this that we can, if we have to avoid this in inhibitors, we can give angiotensin receptor blockers to these patients to relieve them from the cough of this side effect, which is a side effect for this. Now. What is meant by the pressure diuresis and pressure natriuresis and the role we are going to, uh, we have discussed this in the lecture, but here I am going to repeat it again to show the effect of angiotensin 2 on this pressure diuresis and the natriuresis. You know whenever there is increase in arterial pressure, it has got mainly the three effects. Whenever the blood pressure is rises, what happens? there will be small increase in the GFR, small because it will be opposed or buffered by the autoregulation. But keep in mind that this small increase in the GFR is enough to lose the sodium in, in the urine, to lose the sodium along with the water in the urine. So whenever this small increase in GFR, definitely more filtrate will be formed and the speed of flow of filtrate in the uh, nephron will be more and when the speed will be more the net reabsorption of the sodium in the nephron will be less and this will cause the increased loss of sodium along with the water into the urine that is increase in the urine output and this will ultimately decrease your arterial pressure. Then whenever they rise in the arterial pressure it will definitely not only increase your uh, GFR, but it also increases the pressure in the peritubular capillary network. And this peritubular pressure increase in the peritubular capillary network will cause the back leak of sodium, back increase in the back leak of sodium into the lumen, that the sodium will come back into the lumen and it will be increased or you can say the it will be lost in the urine, increase in urinary output. So there will be a decrease in blood pressure. This is the second way. And the third is that the normal response of the production of angiotensin 2 to the salt intake is reciprocal. That means when we increase the salt intake, the angiotensin level should be decreased in the body. And if we decrease the salt intake, 
the angiotensin 2 excuse me you just wait yeah this is the slide and when you decrease the salt intake the angiotensin level should increase so the level of your salt in your body and the level of angiotensin 2 they are reciprocal to each other and some and the response of blood pressure response of blood pressure to the salt intake is quite variable in different people some people whenever they increase their salt intake they will decrease the sodium uh, production of angiotensin 2 but some people when they increase their salt intake they cannot decrease their angiotensin production and these are known as salt sensitive hypertensive patients so here another mechanism whenever the arterial pressure is more there is decrease in the angiotensin level which also causes a decrease in the aldosterone and this will increase the urinary graph which is coming from the guidance this graph has got three lines one is the red line then is the black line and then we have got the blue dotted line actually the red line this red line shows that if you block the effects of angiotensin 2 that is by giving the ACE inhibitors if you block oh there is no uh, if you block it that means there is no effect of angiotensin 2 in your body so when there is no angiotensin 2 the vasoconstrictor effect will not be there and there will be vasodilatation leading to the hypotension that means blood pressure will be the low as you, you can see here that this graph is initiating or is starting from very low blood pressure so if you increase the here is your salt intake is the salt intake double and four times is in six times so if you increase the salt intake the blood pressure will begin to rise in these patients so graph is from this side from the very low lower side when you increase the uh, sodium intake this sodium intake will cause the rise in the blood pressure and the blood pressure is going to be the rise but in the next slide you will see that the, you have got a black line and this is the normal person line in these persons normal persons when there is angiotensin 2 <coughs> is there now if you increase the salt intake if you increase the salt intake your angiotensin 2 level will be decreased immediately and your when the angiotensin 2 will reduce in your body the excess of the sodium will be lost in the urine and there is no sodium retention and your blood pressure remains normal this normality of the blood pressure within the limits within the normal limit is because of the decrease in the angiotensin 2 level in the body and this is your black line and now you have got a third line there is a blue dotted line in this graph this line is concerned with those people who have got salt sensitive hypertension that means these people cannot reduce their angiotensin level when they enhance or increase in the sodium intake so normally normally there when you take more salt your angiotensin level angiotensin 2 level should be dropped and blood pressure will maintain to the normal things and that is sodium is lost in the urine because the angiotensin level is uh, is less now in this dotted line these people they cannot reduce their angiotensin 2 level in response to high intake of the sodium now these patients have got only one option to get rid of this excess of the sodium that they have to increase their blood pressure they have to increase their blood pressure what will happen they will increase their blood pressure this there will be a small increase in the gfr this small because it is opposed by the auto regulation but this small increase in gfr is enough to cause the loss of sodium in the urine this will increase the hydrostatic pressure of the peritubular capillary network it will cause the back leak of the sodium in the lumen and the excretion of sodium in the urine 
but this all is happening at the expense of raised in the blood pressure this is shown the blue dotted line so this angiotensin 2 we have seen that it has got multiple effects one effect is we have seen that vasoconstrictive effect then we have seen that it has got very very important effects on the uh, kidneys that it will cause the retention of the super have the most powerful sodium retaining hormone and this retention is is a proper to work is uh, it constrict the efferent arteriole and this efferent arteriole ultimately create different changes we have seen all these things and it directly stimulate the sodium potassium pump it also stimulate the sodium hydrogen counter transport it increases the production of the aldosterone these and it also increases the thirst this angiotensin 2 is also increases your thirst by the stimulating the subfornical organ of the brain it also increases the secretion of the adh so all these functions are done by the adh and this was all about uh, all, sorry by the angiotensin 2 and this was all about the angiotensin 2 now very important one sentence this angiotensin 2 and the aldosterone both of them they are the sodium retaining hormones and they also retain the water along with them that's why their effect on the osmolarity is far less because they reabsorb or retain sodium and the water in the same ratio so the osmolarity is not going to be disturbed usually if you compare it with the ADH and the thirst mechanism which are concerned with the reabsorption of the pure water and that injured, uh, sorry that ADH and the thirst mechanism they are, have more effect for the maintenance of the osmolarity and this was all about your angiotensin 2 thank you very much